hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Steph. Hello, Linda. Hello, Jenny. How are we doing midweek? We okay? Are we still on Thanksgiving time? How's it? Are we okay? Is everyone? Hi, Lena. Hi, Debbie. Are we all still snacking five to seven times a day? How, how's that? Have, have we pivoted yet? No? Okay, good for you. I'm really impressed. I'm still on Hobbit snacking time, trying to work on it. Really just expecting to eat crackers and cheese all day. Um, hello, so many new friends. Welcome, everyone. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Lee. Hello, Patty. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Chef Jenny. I am your cruise director today. I'm your chef for the next hour. Um, if you're new to this class, to homemade, welcome. Welcome, first timers. We are an online cooking school, and we love to have fun, and we love new friends, so thank you for joining us. If you are returning, returning friend, we like to call them the homemaders. Again, correct us if that's not your name, that's what we've heard. Um, always wonderful to see you all, and thank you for joining us on this wonderful Wednesday. It's raining here in Seattle, might snow. I don't know what's going on where you guys are. You want If you wanna drop your temperatures in the chat, it'd be nice to see. I mean, it is snow. Guys, I wanna tell you, I just moved to Seattle at the beginning of the year. Is my first, or oh, beginning of the year, over the summer, and this is my first time driving in snow, and I did it, and I was very excited. So, um, yes, some of you in the East Coast might think this is ridiculous, but, like, I, I'm waiting for someone to give me a badge. I haven't seen one anywhere, so I will, maybe it's coming up later. Um, this is cider braised chicken. So the snow, it's cold, it's rainy here. I, I'm really excited for this one. A nice, cozy, wonderful dish. The best part of this class, best part, in my opinion, is that we have friends with us. Uh, at Homemade, we are lucky enough to partner with some really amazing friends. We're very picky who we partner with. It's only the cream of the crop, and we are so excited today because we have the ultimate rock stars in the food world. We are partnered with the American Diabetes Association. We have Julie. We have um, Viola. They're here. We'll say hello to them. They are nutritionists. They are heroes, and they are doing hard work making sure that everyone is eating healthy and providing resources. Um, one in 10 Americans have diabetes. I have several family members who are affected. I'm sure you all do as well. So we are so grateful to them. We're so grateful to be partnering with them and doing this class with them today. So we got something we can feel good about eating, something that's delicious, and that's something that comes together pretty quick. I mean, what else do you need, guys? This is it. This is all that's um, all you need in life. We also have Chef George on the chat. He's in charge of everything per usual. So say hello to Chef George. If you guys have a question, just raise your little hand on your um, chat and we can answer it. Uh, you also can pose questions in the chat and Chef George can get my attention and we can make sure we get an answer for you. We're very lucky to have Julie and Viola with us today. They're significantly smarter than I am. So put your questions in the chat, guys. You're very lucky to have them at your fingertips here. So any questions you have about nutrition, about diabetes, they might can help you or direct you where to go. Um, we want to direct you first and foremost as we're talking through the class to the diabetesfoodhub.org. This is an incredible resource, really unbelievable recipes. I think it can get a little overwhelming this time of year when you have a lot of people visiting and you want to entertain. And if anyone has di diabetes and you want to make sure you're making food that they can feel good about eating, it's all done for you. All you have to do is click di diabetesfoodhub.org and you can have a, so many beautiful, wonderful recipes at your fingertips. And what I really, really like, because I'm a, a very visual person, is that there's beautiful pictures going along with the recipes. So you can instantly see, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's, li it's the little things, right? I, I need, I'm a simple person, I need pictures. Okay, guys, I, I, can't, I can't see it unless I have pictures. So um, Chef George is putting in the chat, 12, 12 degrees in Anchorage. Hello, Lynn from Anchorage. Okay, you win. That's colder than here. You, that's well done. This is, this is for you. This is nice and cozy. You're going to want to make this dish. 
Anyone have like 80 degrees in sun right now? Still, this dish is perfect for that. Yes, Deb, you do. All right, okay, good for you guys. I mean, you know, it's hard to hear, but we're accepting. We're accepting, we're moving forward. Cold sweater weather, let's get into it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If you guys, again, have questions, throw them in the chat. We're gonna get going here. Um, I, any, if you're cooking along with us, I know, it, I know it's vulnerable, but you're amongst friends. Put on your camera because I love to, I love to see it. We love to see what you're cooking. So if you're comfortable doing that, go for it. Sh show us what's going on. Um, and we're going to get into it. We're going to start. Are you guys hungry? I'm hungry. I'm always hungry. It's time, right? Yeah, right, Julie? Everyone. I'm all, when am I not hungry? Um, cider braised chicken. Let's get into it. Braised. Anytime I read a recipe that says braised on it. I get very excited. I think comfort, I think a warm hug, I think cozy. We're having chicken thighs, we're having apples, we're having chard. We still get to have bacon, we have bacon guys. So we have all, so many different players and so many different levels of flavors in here. My favorite part of this, one pot. We're doing this in one pot. I am tired, everyone. Are you tired after Thanksgiving? It is a lot. Cyber Monday wore me out. It, it, we still got a month to go, people. So we got, we got a full month left of this, of this grind. So I, I need help with dishes. So that's what we got one pot for you. So I've got a big pot here. Um, if you got a Dutch oven, a really large Dutch oven, we love a Dutch oven here at Homemade. Let me get this right here. So I got a big pot. What you want to make sure is that you have your pot has a lid on it because with braising, we're going to trap our steam as we go. And that's what we're going to want to do. So I'm just going to start turning on my pan to medium here. I like a good Dutch oven. Great Christmas gift. If you're thinking about it, not a bad thing to do. Got a little olive oil here. You can use vegetable oil too, not too much. Got some bacon, thin sliced bacon. I'm just gonna add this in here. We've got one slice, sliced up, already pre-chopped here that I'm just gonna add it in. This is gonna add a base of layer for us, a base of flavor for us, a layer of flavor. We're gonna drain the fat, so if you're thinking instantly, whoa, bacon, we're trying to do a little healthier, mindful cooking here. We ran the nut nutrition facts, guys, we're okay. One, one slice of bacon isn't gonna do us in. It's all about balance, right? What we're getting from this is a smokiness and a depth of savoriness. And by starting with this in our pan, first, we're creating flavor right here. Absolutely lovely. So we're just gonna get this going. Instantly smells good. We all know the best recipes start with bacon. Everyone knows this. We may not talk about it, but everyone knows this. So we've got a slice of bacon here, just a little bit of my veg oil. I'm gonna drain the excess fat. It's just preventing it from burning. That's why it's in there. As my bacon is going here, instantly I'm smelling that little bit of that hickory. So we know this is, this is really gonna balance well. We have apples, we've got all the good stuff, chicken thighs. So we're gonna start doing a little chopping. Be careful, watch out, a pastry chef is chopping everyone. This is it, I mean, news at 11. <laughs> if you're expecting Chef Joel's speed, we're gonna be really precise and delicate here. So what we're gonna start off with is, um, we have our bacon, we have our chicken thighs, a shallot. Are we working with shallots at home? We love shallots at homemade. I love a good shallot. I sliced half of it up already, just to show you here. A nice little, can you guys see that? A nice little dice here. It doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't a, this isn't a Michelin star cooking here. We just kind of roughly want it the same size. Do, that is one my one thing about chopping, is getting things the same size. Can you tell me why? You guys are pretty smart. We're going with the easy one here. We're going with a little bit of softball. Why is it important to have the same size? You guys, you make me so proud. Even cooking, yes. If we dice our food the same size, if we fillet our food the same size, as we're cooking, it's going to cook evenly. So, I mean, you have a rogue large chunk of shallot in there. The dish isn't ruined, don't throw it out. But you try to get it as close in size as possible. 
That's why like the first six weeks of culinary school, they don't really let you cook anything. You're just slicing onions and potatoes all day. And then someone comes by and goes, that's not a dice. And you're like, okay. And then you have to go back to it. It's not as glamorous as you think, guys. So just kind of adjust me, my heat here. Mmm, smells good. I pre-chopped this a little bit because I was crying so much from the shallots. Shallots are just like onions. They're in the onion family. They release gas as you're chopping it. A little trick, does it, I'm really affected by it. In glasses, people, people don't know what we go through. The gas gets trapped in our glasses and it's like you're, you're gassing yourself. It's brutal. If you have a good vent in your kitchen, I find that turning the vent on as you're chopping helps. Someone told me in a cooking class I was doing, because they worked at in and out in high school, California burger chain, if you will, if you are not familiar, that the guys cutting the onions, because onion, the gas that's released is attracted to moisture. Your eyes have moisture, so that's why it makes you cry. That the guys at in and out would line their boards, their cutting boards, with pickles, and the pickles would absorb that gas instead of your eyes. I've never tried it. This might be a myth. I'm, I've been intrigued to try it, guys. So do what you can. I have seen people with onion goggles. Much respect. Do what you got to do, all right? Don't let anyone make fun of you for it, okay? So just slicing some shallots here. You can find shallots or you got onions at home. Onions are fine. I like a yellow onion for this, personally. I think that's got the, kind of got the perfect balance of flavor. Nice yellow onion, but you know, onions, apples, bacon, I mean, everyone, everyone's friends. Got a clove of garlic here. We're gonna mince it. Mince just means kind of a fine dice. Got this. I used to be so scared before culinary school of taking the knife and pressing the garlic. It's okay if you still gives you a little, a sharp knife, right? Nothing, nothing to, to just dismiss. A sharp knife can't cut you, but People who are taller, like Chef Joel, if you've ever seen us cook a class together, he looks 10 feet tall compared to me. <laughs> the, the, I'm so jealous. You can get so much leverage with the height. The, usually counters are up to here on me, so I gotta, gotta work a little bit extra on it. Gonna mince up some garlic here, which is a clove of garlic. Love fresh garlic. I think a great tip about trying to do more mindful and healthy cooking is using really great fresh ingredients. Start with good quality ingredients, and then the flavor just naturally comes. Garlic powder, you got it, I understand you got to use it, but there's, and maybe this is my Italian coming out, talking to you guys, there's something about fresh garlic. I love fresh garlic, it's just, that aroma instantly is the best. Are my hands gonna smell like garlic for days? Yes. Do I care? No. Apologize to no one for garlic hands, everyone. Let's check our bacon. George, how are we doing in the chat? Yeah. Talking about the you guys, look at my fellow little food scientists. I'm so proud of you all. Yes, using the proper names for the gas, right on. Got our bacon here. Why is, when is someone gonna invent a bacon cologne? I would, I would wear bacon perfume. I would, I love, it's either vanilla or bacon. I have nothing in the middle. I would wear either, you guys. Ugh. So I'm just getting a little fat here. Not too much, but we'll kind of tip the pan and take it out. So no worries, it doesn't have to stay. It's just, it, if you've got too dry of a pan, sometimes it can burn and we don't want that. Just stirring it around very leisurely. So we got shallot, we got garlic. George is, Anyone have onion goggles? Have we tried the onion goggles? I, I'm really impressed if you guys got them. Got these over here. Mmm, smelling really good. Um, fresh thyme. Again, we're talking about being mindful with cooking, about mindful, healthy cooking. Use the freshest ingredients possible. I feel like this is maybe one of the most divisive things among chefs is do you use dried herbs or not? I say as long as you're cooking, go for it, have fun. I love to get fresh herbs when I can. I just think fresh thyme. I feel like every kitchen, did your kitchen smell like fresh thyme over Thanksgiving week? I feel like this is the definitive smell, this and sage. 
I just pull it and pull down, and the time comes off. Um, I, I kind of just feel like right now, especially you can find fresh herbs so readily. They're in the stores. They're pretty affordable right now. Just buy a pack, throw it in the fridge. A little trick I love I learned that we love to do here is as soon as you buy them, kind of rinse them off and roll them in a damp paper towel and then keep them in the fridge. And then when you're ready, you just pull from them and we keep them in a plastic bag or a stasher bag, whatever kind of bag you got. Just, it makes, it's that little step of just when you're cooking in the middle of midweek, coming home from work makes it that much easier. So my bacon's coming, looks beautiful. I'm just gonna take it out now. So I have rosemary, I have plenty of thyme. I feel like thyme and garlic and apples, it all goes together. And then I'm just gonna tip a little, take some of this excess fat off. Not too much, but I don't want too much fat in here. This can help if you have a nonstick pan too. I find Dutch ovens are pretty good um, being nonstick. You don't have to use as much fat. So I'm just kind of draining some of this fat. Just again, trying to be a little mindful about calories here. And then I have some chicken thighs, a pound of chicken thighs. You wanna use chicken breasts, go for it. I like, and if your pan's too dry, just add a little more olive oil. This is the part though, if you're using a smaller pan, don't overcrowd it. And what that means is, if they're this close together, they're gonna kind of steam and you're not gonna really get a nice brown. And we want a nice brown on there because that's flavor. We have our layer of bacon in there, that bacon flavor, and now we're getting a layer of chicken thigh flavor. Boneless, skinless, you can also use boneless, skinless breasts. It's up to you. The thing you just need to make sure is we, that skin can be a secret um, source of fat, so you really wanna make sure you take that skin off first and get that sear in there. Two ingredients, it instantly smells incredible in here. That, that ch chicken cooking in, in bacon fat, like yum, yum. I'm happy, I'm really happy right now. Plus the time, it's wafting through. If you, I know a lot of people, maybe you had one stuffing recipe that said use like half a teaspoon of poultry seasoning and then you went out and you bought poultry seasoning and now you're like, what do I do with this? You can absolutely add poultry seasoning in here. Just be mindful that it's salt free and usually poultry seasoning is. It's a combination of dried herbs, usually sage, you have thyme in there. It's pretty good, it would be beautiful with this. It's kind of like you buy cream and tartar one time when you make meringue and then it's just there forever and you're like, what do I do with this? It's the same thing with poultry seasoning. Add some poultry seasoning in here. So I'm just pulling off again, thyme, pinch at the top, my little leaves come off. Love fresh herbs. You don't have thyme, rosemary would be fine, sage would be fine, a little parsley would be fine. All good stuff. Any questions, George? How are we doing out there, everyone? Are we quiet? Or are we, are uh, we, I think we're still doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good? I, can we, I would love to know if anyone has poultry seasoning right now. Anyone, anyone buy, buy a very specific spice or ingredient for Thanksgiving that now you have a lot left over for? It happens. Love to see it. I'm not moving these, you might notice. I'm not trying to move these around. I have enough of the fat in the pan. This is nonstick. I'm trying to get browning. Browning is flavor. That's how we develop flavor. It's just getting a little bit of that browning. So I'm not... Leave them alone. They didn't do anything to you. Let them, let them be a piece. We're just gonna let them go and I'm gonna just chop a little bit of my thyme here. Just roughly. Again, this is, this is very relaxed cooking. I find pulling thyme and herbs very meditative. I don't know why. It relaxes me. So we got shallot, we got garlic, we have our bacon. Wonderful, really nice. Smells incredible. I mean, kind of. we kind of have a party just that, guys. But we also have some ingredients here. I'm gonna do top down. We have some apple cider vinegar. In case you guys were wondering, this is not um, 
apple cider, like the sugary apple cider, that's something very much to be aware of. Apple cider vinegar. It's going to add a nice acid and a balance and really complement our uh, apples that we naturally have in there. So the natural kind of apple flavor in there. Apple cider vinegar. Love apple cider vinegar. Let's see. I'm trying to see, did we get any? Yes, the poultry seasoning. All right, Nancy. Yes. You know what uh, poultry season is also really good on is pit potatoes to roast or um, cauliflower to roast. Not too bad. Pretty tasty. Any vegetable, really. Or you can make kale chips out of it with uh, poultry seasoning. It's wonderful flavors. If you guys are think trying, I don't know, anyone else a nerd like me and already thinking about the ho December holiday menus? I'm already having, yeah, for, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, yes. I already have that little note on my phone of looking at it. I'm just going to chop up my apple here. So if you're trying to look for holiday menus, again, we're going to say it again, diabetesfoodhub.org. I've been loving how many wonderful holiday items, recipes they have on there. This is a stewed chicken. I mean, this is really filling. But if you think, if you're serving for a big crowd and trying to think of what else to serve, they have a lot of different types of uh, mashed potatoes on their site. One using cauliflower as part of it, which is something I love to do. I just love the flavor of cauliflower, so it's a nice mix. I also really like, they have a recipe that uses olive oil and herbs, which... And potatoes, come on, come on. So I just like looking, browsing. They had cranberry sauce on there, which, yes. That's one where I don't like it really sugary. It's meant to be a little, it's meant to be acidic. It's meant to be a side. So um, a winter salad, which is always, I always appreciate the person who brings a salad. I'm usually that person. It's either a pie, I don't have any in between. It's a pie or it's a salad. I kind of like bringing it when I know there's not going to be any vegetables at the gathering I'm going to, and people always appreciate it. It's kind of the thing you don't think of, but when you're just laden with carbs, carbs and sugar, it's really nice when someone brings a really fresh, fresh ingredient. We've got our beautiful, we're using pink lady apples here. You want to see beautiful apples. Love crisp apples. So we're in Washington here. Homemade is headquartered in Seattle. So we've got all the apples. Washington is the apple state. I'm just going to take a little bit, actually, of my apple cider vinegar and just toss this over. I like getting my chopping out of the way, but that's going to keep them from browning. Let's check our chicken. The acid helps it prevent from browning. Do you guys know? Let's see here. I always see a question. Is a tart or sweet apple better? I like a tart apple, but sweet is fine too. Uh, um, Fuji is kind of a sweeter apple. I think that would be really nice here. Again, Pink Lady is beautiful. I think we're good here. I'm just going to turn these guys if you want to see. See how beautiful that is? So really kind of, you want to make sure it's nice and firm. I mean, a Granny Smith is a great apple that does holds up really well in heat. The reason is, is we're going to braise this for 20 minutes. So if you get start with the apple that's a little mealy or mushy, looking at you, Red Delicious. I would not use a Red Delicious here. Um, it's going to kind of get very mushy after. I know I just threw shade at Red Delicious, but I, I can't. I don't know why. It doesn't do it for me. Are, is there any Red Delicious fans out there? I apologize. Just, no, see, this is universal. Why? Why? I don't know what it's serving. I will take a Granny Smith over a Red Delicious any day. I, I said it. Come after me, Red Delicious group. I'm ready for you. I said it. I'm standing by it. Do you see all that browning? Look at this again, guys. See all this? This is flavor, that nice little browning. We're getting a nice little sear here. So that's what we want. So a little, a little question for you all. Do you know how many varieties of apples there are in the United States? Ooh, apple-focused dish, do we know? Let's see. Don't Google, I can see if you're Googling. I, wanna, I, want, I, want, I want authentic guesses out here. 200 higher, hi, hi, 87, way higher, way higher. 
550, way higher. Keep going, guys. Chef George, it's not a million, silly Billy. Yeah, Jennifer, much closer. There's 7,500 varieties of apples. Go for it. Only 7,499 in my opinion, because I'm not counting Red Delicious. I said it, there's so much shade towards Red Delicious. These guys are looking good. I'm gonna take these out. They smell fantastic. We've got that nice browning. It smells so good. We got still plenty of, of little residual fat in our pan. So now what I'm gonna add to this is our aromatics, and that is our shallot and our garlic. Just going in, there's something about when shallot and garlic hit a pan, you guys. Nothing better. Look at that. I think I need just a dash, just a dash of olive oil. There we go. And then I'll stir this around. It smell as soon as these hit the pan, amazing. And just kind of going about medium heat or saute. Don't burn the garlic. Don't do it. You can't come back from burned garlic. It leaves this residual flavor in the pan that taints everything. You can't, you, you can add a, a jug of wine to it and you can't go back, guys. So don't burn it. I, I am infamous from walking away and, and trying to multitask and then my nose tells me that something went crazy awry and then you come back and you're like, oh no. So don't burn the garlic. We want, we want just a saute. My, for Aramax, so for like shallot and garlic, it's usually a good rule of thumb. You're looking for about one to two minutes here. Most of the time when you're doing a saute like this, usually we say in recipes until aromatic. And what that means is that until you really start, it starts getting fragrant. So usually all you need is about one to two minutes. These guys are just, ah, uh, amazing. So if you can see here, this little browning here, little brownings, does anyone know what the name is for that browning in the bottom of a pan? We're kicking it up a notch now with the questions. Let's see. Do we know what's... You guys, you make my heart so proud. Fond, yes, F-O-N-D, fond. I'm fond of fond. Ooh, someone put that on a sweatshirt. I would wear that. I'm fond of fond. We're fond of fond. Fond is flavor. So it's in our pan now. And now the question is, well, how do we, yes, our garlic and our shallot, it is releasing some of it, but how do we get off the pan? We do something called deglazing. So if you add water, broth, acid, we have chicken broth here, low sodium, I want to control my salt. So I always like buying low sodium chicken broth. And we have apple cider vinegar. That's gonna add our apple flavor, but it's also gonna help deglaze. Smelling amazing, of course. So top down here, apple cider vinegar right in here. And you see how it's bubbling? Take the back of your spoon and start scraping right now. That's gonna release your fond. We want the fond release because we want it in our sauce. That's what's going to give us our beautiful, beautiful flavor here. Really depth of flavor. Because all that bacon savoriness, all of that chicken thigh savoriness is getting released right now. Yes, love that. So to this, I got my low sodium chicken broth. have some freshly ground black pepper. We always really advocate for freshly ground black pepper here. There is just kind of a, a real difference in quality from um, pre-ground to freshly ground. And then something maybe you, you wouldn't think, this guy, a little Dijon mustard. If you have whole grain, you can use that too. I like the bite of Dijon. Right here, beautiful. Dijon adds a little bite. It's not, I want to, I don't think it's spicy. I think it just has a bite to it that I really enjoy. That I think, again, we kind of have a natural sweetness from our apples. 
So adding in a little bite kind of balances it. If you like spice, you can absolutely add some red pepper flakes in here. I know that is, it can be a divisive ingredient in households, how much spice to add. I like a little spice with apples and char, why not? So we're having this, I'm just gonna turn this down to low. I mean, and we kind of, we don't really, between the broth and the bacon, we have plenty of sodium in here. So I don't really need to salt this because it's got already, and, and from the mustard, I've got plenty of salt in here. If you guys are looking for more resources, that's something I've learned for cooking with my family, family members who have diabetes, is that, you know, you want to watch the fat, you want to watch the sodium. It can be a little bit overwhelming. And I know a lot of people in the new year are trying to be very conscious of that, especially as people are coming over. So we also want to, George is going to go ahead and put the link um, to the diabetes website that you can go ahead and check for New Year's guides, for guides for health, living healthy. Um, the American Diabetes Association isn't just guiding people here in the United States. It's a resource for people all over the world, including physicians. So you know it's pretty good when doctors are referencing it. I trust that. It's nice to just get a really good base of like, okay, break this down for me. So if you guys are looking for more resources, how do I start this or how do I help support a family member? Go on there. It's a great, great resource. Okay. Ugh, amazing. Unbelievable. So we have bacon. We have apples. We have chicken thighs. We've got our sauce going away here. Let's talk about another star of the show. Dot, and that website, guys, is diabetes.org. Can't remember if I said that or not. Diabetes.org. Check them out. So grateful to them for that. Okay. Look how beautiful this is. I mean, give this as a bouquet. I would be happy. Check it out. Swiss chard. I love chard. So flavorful. In the greens family alone, you're talking about kale, um, all the different types of greens that you can find at the store. I love this beautiful red color. I think it's so vibrant and delicious. I don't, I wanna, when I buy food, I wanna use as much of it as I can. I like the stems personally. I always use the stems with kale. I know it's not everyone's bag, but it's definitely mine. I'm gonna thinly slice. The thing you have to th think about when you're cooking with chard is that you want to thinly slice these stems because they're a little bit more fibrous, so they can take a little longer to cook. If you're like, I'm not doing these stems, lady. All right, fair enough. But you can pull right down here and just take the leaf off. Compost it. This is good stuff, though, guys. Don't waste this. This is really good stuff. I love chard. I use chard in smoothies. I eat chard for everything. Chard's really, really nice. I'm just going to go ahead and these got little guys, you see a little ends, they're just a little dry. Again, you can use dinosaur kale, you can all, use all different types of greens. You can use collards if you want, mustard greens, whatever floats your boat. But look how beautiful this red is. And just slice it up, the stems and the leaves. I actually, a little holiday hack, is this time of year, I like to put chard and floral arrangements for my table because of that beautiful red. I love using seasonal food as part of a table decoration. So I have pomegranates and I have persimmons and I have apples on my table right now. And I like to put in my floral arrangements a little bit of this chard at the last minute. It's really beautiful. It adds a nice green to it. I don't know, just throwing it out there. Most people don't even recognize that it's chard. <laughs> so it's a good time. Okay. So I've got my chard here. So we're gonna turn up a little bit. All right. So now I'm gonna add, and you see, so just, I mean, not huge chunks. You don't have to get them super thin, but just, again, roughly the same size, right? We want stuff roughly the same size. I saw who put cabbage, yes, Jennifer, cabbage would be great in here. I love cabbage this time of year. I would actually think some sliced red cabbage would be really nice. I love me some red cabbage. So we have our chard, we have our apples. Look at this. And 
Julie and Viola, if you guys have any great nutrition information to share about apples are charred, go ahead and throw it into the chat. We'd love to hear it. Again, if you guys have questions, please send them over to put them in the chat for Julie and Viola. They are, I mean, they're nutrition wizards. We're so lucky to have them, guys. This is a special treat. So I'm just going to toss this together. Look, I mean, that's gorgeous. Look at all these different colors. You want to eat the rainbow, right? Look at all these beautiful colors. Love this. I'm seeing spinach. Yeah, spinach would be great, guys. Love all these recommendations. All right. Now, we got our liquid in here. I'm going to go ahead. Last piece is just nestle in my chicken thighs. And I want to make sure that they're covered. If you're using thighs or breast, make sure they're covered. We want that moisture in there for braising. Add them in. Beautiful. And then my plate here has got some juice. Do not put this in the sink. This is flavor. This is free flavor. So I'm just adding that juice in. It's going to cook in here. Look at that. Coming together quite quickly. I'm going to put my lid on it. If you guys, this time of year, this is when I'm very hyper aware of needing quick recipes. So if you all, and I'm just adding this cover, and I'm going to turn it up a little. I wanted to bring it up. It should only take a minute to a boil, a, a good simmer. And then I'm going to reduce the heat. And we're going to simmer for 20 minutes. If you guys are looking or very conscious and needing quick recipes, Homemade has a solution for you. We are launching our first paid course. It is called Homemade in a Hurry. Isn't that adorable? It launches December 15th. You can sign up for it, and you get five courses, five recipes with, the, with um, the purchase. And you can also give it as a great holiday gift because who doesn't need quick recipes? We all need quick recipes. So, again, that's homemade in a hurry. Chef George is going to go ahead and drop a link right now in the chat if you guys are interested or, like, what do I get for the person that has everything? This might be a great gift to give. So I'm already – I got a simmer going. I'm reducing this now. Okay, 20 minutes. That's what we want, everyone, 20 minutes. This is a pretty quick dish. This comes together pretty quick. So I'm just going to get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to do a little TV magic for you all. Forgive me, but I can't sit here and talk 20 minutes about apples. I just can't. You don't want that. I don't want that. No one wants that. So we're going to do a little TV magic, and I'm going to pull out here just let this guy simmer i mean can you i know you can't smell it but can you smell it can you imagine what it smells like it smells pretty good in here right now like ooh, bacon apples all right pardon me i'm gonna come grab my pan over here yes so i'm doing a little tv magic all right let's see here you guys are you ready? It looks so beautiful. Look at that. Ooh, apples and greens Look, and chicken. Look at this beautiful concoction here. If you don't have Dijon mustard, you can use whole grain. I threw a little whole grain in here as well. And it's just got those beautiful specks. Look at that. Look at all that beautiful broth that comes with it. So really, this is great to do with some roasted veggies as a side. This is great to do with those cauliflower mashed potatoes because that liquid is just going to slurp it up. One final ingredient. This guy right here. See that? We're doing Greek yogurt. Low-fat Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt, I love Greek yogurt. It has a high protein amount. It's really creamy. As sauce like this, you know, you want it to feel special, but I don't want to add heavy cream to this. So that's way too much fat. But this, I, I love Greek yogurt. It's a really easy, 
flavorful way to add some creaminess to a dish. This is optional. You don't have to add this if you don't want. Some people like this really brothy. I could go either way, but I'm going to add, just stir this in here. And just stir. It'll come together instantly. It almost looks like gravy. You know what I mean? It's kind of adding that creaminess makes it feel like a really nice gravy. It's got, uh, I really wish you guys could smell this. I love that chart. It cooks down beautifully. Nice and tender. Really, really nice. The apples, again, this is important. My apples are holding their shape. So if I had um, a mealy apple, again, a, a, a pink lady, a Fuji, a Granny Smith, if I use an apple that's really mushy to begin with, they kind of would be disintegrated in the sauce right now. Still delicious, but I kind of like having that texture. With the, you get a bite of chicken, you have the, call, the greens, and then you have a little texture of the apple. I, I, I mean, I'm going to plate this, guys. And it looks like Karen has a question. Yes, please. Who's got a question? What would you suggest as a dairy-free option? Oh, absolutely. You can buy... Um, they have, actually, yogurts that are made out of nuts. If you, it, as long as you're not allergic to nuts, you can do, um, like, a cashew yogurt. Or um, you could add a, a little dash of oat milk or cashew milk. Again, this is based on what allergies you might have in your family. Um, I, I'm going to tell you guys a story here as before we plate this up. So I worked at a mac and cheese company for a long time. And we put on our, I put, I came up, we came up with the idea of, you know, let's suggest using yogurt instead of milk to make kind of like a tangier mac and cheese. So we put that on the cooking directions. And then I was reading an email from one of our devoted fans. And she said, you know, I love that suggestion. That's so great. But I'm going to ask for you to clarify in the future that it should be plain yogurt. Because my husband made this for our children and he used strawberry yogurt. And I think about that roughly one to two times a week, and this was over a decade ago. So I'm gonna re reiterate to you all now, you <laughs> use plain yogurt, whatever you do, whatever dairy you use, just make sure it's not strawberry flavored in this one. I mean, how precious, right? Come on. I'm getting apples, I'm getting chicken. Let's see, you guys gotta see this. I'm getting this beautiful sauce over it. Look, I mean, can you guys see the kind of almost gravy color you get from it? Uh, I mean, I'm good just this. I could eat a bowl of this. This almost feels like a stew. But again, you can add a nice salad on the side of it. You can add roasted veggies. Cut a little bite of it. Little apple. Need a little apple. This. Let's see. Do you see that? That's the perfect bite. It's got all the stuff. Let me do a little side view for you here. Let's use that fun side camera we got, guys. Do you see that? Look at all that beautiful juice. Ooh. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Moment of truth. Cozy. It's so cozy. Oh, my gosh. I love apples. That apple just takes it right up here. And the mustard is adding a nice little kind of rounded, just, I don't know, other than a depth of flavor to it. That's so nice. Oh, I, I need a sweater. I need a, a cup of cocoa. I need a fire roaring. This is like, this is winter. This is holiday on a plate. Guys. This went by pretty quick. I, I'm so grateful that you're all here. I really hope you think about making this during the holidays. It can get really overwhelming with a lot of, you know, carb-heavy, fat-heavy dishes. This is a beautiful dish that, again, look how beautiful that is. One pot, one pot comes together in under 45 minutes. It feels special. And it's got a perfect balance of protein and vegetables and lower sodium and fat. This is, this is what you want from life. This is what I want for life. And so 
I hope you guys really enjoy this recipe and think about making it for your family. And you're like, I'm not sure about this one. Again, diabetesfoodhub.org. They've got every recipe you can imagine. I, I, we were drooling over it earlier today. It's delicious. It's amazing. And we're so grateful to all the contributions that they've made on there. And again, there's pictures. That's all I want in life. There's pictures of all the recipes. So if you're thinking, and it just doesn't have to be healthy. They're just great recipes. So if you're thinking, what do I make? Go on to there again. Chef George will put it on there. I want to thank all of you for coming. First timers, come back. We want to see you. Um, returning homemaders, thank you as always. Biggest thanks of all. We want to thank Julie. We want to thank Viola for their amazing work. They're rock stars in the food world. We are so proud and honored to partner with the American Diabetes Association. They're doing the real world work helping so many people. So we're so grateful to them. Um, tag us if you guys make this, please. Add AM Diabetes ASSN at with homemade. We want to see what you guys make. We want to see the creativity. There is no such thing as a bad dish. We want to see it all. And um, most of all, thanks for coming. So we have multiple classes this week. We um, have a risotto class coming up tomorrow. So join us for that. And until we see you next time, keep on cooking. So thanks for coming, guys. <laughs>